Supreme Magus, Chapter 83, Interludium, Part 2. True magic? Scarlet sneered. Another pretentious name for my collection then. Why don't you come out? Talking this way is tiresome. What about my professors? Aren't you afraid of them meddling? No, right now their surveillance mirrors just show you sleeping. It requires a bit of effort, but I can tamper with them for a while. Lit swallowed the lump of saliva. The monster wasn't lying. It could have killed him ten times already. But that only made the situation even more scary. How do I get out without waking the others? A warp step appeared in front of him, leading in front of the Scorpico, fighting hard to keep his knees from shaking. Lit started waving all his strongest spells, preparing for the worst. Scarlet stared at him with an inquisitive look. Despite being so close, it was hard to perceive any trace of corruption, and that was already a good sign. What do you want from me? Lid asked with one spell ready for each of his fingers. I already told you, I just want your cursed object. After that, I will get out of your hair. My partner is no cursed object or anything. It's just an artifact. You are clearly mistaken. Do you even know what a cursed object is? No, Lit admitted. You see, no matter how powerful an artifact is, it has no life. It's just an object. Scarlet handed to him his pin's nest. This is an artifact. Believe me, now use your true magic and tell me, does it feel alive to you? Lit use invigoration and live vision, perceiving many and powerful magics within it, but no life. It had mana flow, but no mana core or life force. Solus, what about your mana sense? It Indeed has more power than many of your professors, but no mana core. That huge castle is a massive and powerful artifact, but is it alive? Scarlet pointed to the white griffin with one of its claws. Once again, both life vision and mana sense reported a huge flow of mana, but no mana core. No. Lit reluctantly said. Now what about your ring? Lit used invigoration for the first time ever on Solus. Just like in the past he had used live vision to see her mana flow and life force. Invigoration revealed a small yellow mana core. Why didn't you ever tell me you have such a weak core? Lit asked, surprised by the fact that she was so weak despite all the years spent together. Well, you never asked. Besides, what did you expect? After almost starving to death, I was left with barely a red one. I still need time to recuperate. It has a yellow mana core, Lit admitted. Scarlet had to swallow down a huge scoff. That confirms my worries. That thing is playing him like a fiddle. There's no way a living artifact has a just yellow mana core. It must be using some trick to cloud his senses. Scarlet nodded and proceeded with its explanation. Life cannot be created on a whim, from nothing. There are only two ways to give life to an animated object, and both require a terrible price. The first method requires a mage or a creature very powerful and very insane. A cursed object is when someone takes out a huge portion of himself and binds it to a powerful artifact. A leech phylactery is the most common example, but is not the worst kind. Some creatures have a deep grudge or insane ambition but no will to live forever. 
so they pass this obsession of theirs to one of the objects they are most attached, giving it life. But beware, despite having a mind on its own, an immense power, a cursed object is most of the times just a shadow of the worst parts of his creator. It entices its new master with promises of power and glory, but every time they are used, the boundary between master and servant gets thinner. The mind link they share allow the object to tamper with the owner's mind, changing it little by little, until he becomes a copy of the object's maker, striving to complete its loose ends. And when the user dies, they just search for a replacement. What about the second method? Lit was stalling for time, hoping someone would come to his rescue. Well, that's even worse, to the point it's part of the so-called forbidden magic. Forbidden? Lit had never heard about any kind of magic being forbidden, not even necromancy. Yes, forbidden magic is the most horrible thing a magical creature could do, using the life of others to empower its creations. Such magic can give birth to miracles, but the price is too high, the risk immense. It's a natural process, almost impossible to balance. One tiny mistake can turn the miracle into a nightmare. The most common case of forbidden magic is when the mage is so obsessed by someone to resort to magic to bound him or her to an object. The victim becomes doomed to an eternity of slavery and after the death of its captor, the only things that awaits is madness. Still a prisoner, incapable of free will, doomed to obey whoever holds the magic's focus. I am no hero, nor a self-proclaimed ally of justice, but destroying such abominations is an act of mercy towards the victim of this perverted kind of magic. Thank you for your lesson, but my partner is neither. Did clench his fist, unwilling to submit. Isn't there any way to prove to you that you are wrong? He asked as a last resort, hoping to avoid a third death. Of course there is. Scarlet's tail stooped waggling, assuming a question mark shape. Being the tail of a scorpion rather than a cat, the gesture resulted threatening. He took several steps back, his whole body ablaze for the mana he was about to unleash. Damn tail. Sorry, habits die hard. Scarlet put the tail under its body in a sign of peace. I just need to touch you, the Scorpicor said raising its huge paw. If I'm wrong, which I consider highly unlikely, I will leave the both of you alone. You have my word. It made sense. Even Lit needed physical contact to use invigoration. If the Scorpicor had a similar technique, it was bound to work the same way. Lit nodded and Scarlet pressed two digital pods on his forehead. Being much older and experienced than Lit, its aura technique not only had all invigoration properties, but it also allows Scarlet to get a glimpse of the subject's true nature. Under the effects of aura, no deception was possible. Both the body and the mind could not lie. What Scarlet saw sent cold shivers down its spine. The body was fine, and so was the mind and the mana core. Aside from a small imbalance caused by too much refining, it was something that would fix by itself with time. But where Lid's true self was supposed to be, 
there was only a bottomless void made of rage, grieving and hate. Staring into that abyss, the Scorpicor could see the abyss staring back, trying to taint its mind with twisted logic and unbridled fury. Circling the void, there were several lights keeping the void at bay and preventing it to devour everything. Getting closer to the lights, Scarlet was able to see that each of them had a face and a name. Carl, Elisa, Lark, and so on. Only one light had a name, but no face. Solus. Order and chaos. What the heck is this, Bob? This is exactly what I would expect it to find in a cursed object, not into any living being. If the corruption spreads so fast, it means it's way worse than I thought. I will probably be forced to kill them both. To confirm its doubts, Scarlet touched the ring, only to once again remain completely dumbfounded. Not only the monocore was yellow, making it the worst living artifact ever, but there was no trace of madness, pain, or ill will. There was only a light, like the Scorpicor was used to see in cubs and babies. The being in the ring was so naive to be upsetting. The black dots encompassing the light had all the same name and face, lit. Being so close to the abyss for so long seemed to have affected the living artifact, making it less trustful and cynic. By the great mother, Scarlet Head was spinning. The human is corrupting this thing, not the other way around. What madness is this? Because of the shock, the Scorpicor took a step back trying to rearrange its chaotic thoughts. Whatever you are, you are not a kid. You are a monster. Scarlet growled. Well... You are not that good looking either, at least according to human standards. Lit filled himself to the brim with mana with invigoration. The beast tone and glare had already said all he needed to know. Insolent whelp, who cares about looks, is not about what you do, is because of what I am. Lit completed the phrase. Remembering Protector's words, I'm sorry, Solas. It's been great knowing you. It seems you'll have to find another partner. Please, forget about me and live as long and happily as you can. The disparity between Lit and his opponent wasn't something that could be overcome with dirty tricks or ingenuity. Lit was preparing himself to die. His only hope was to give Solus enough time to run away from the mad beast. No way, it's only my fault. If it wasn't for me, this thing would have left you alone. I am not leaving you. I have no chance of my own. I much prefer go down fighting instead of running. Solus squeezed her ring from her hard, preventing Lee to take it off. Thanks to its aura technique, Scarlet was still able to see both the monocores. The ability had long-lasting effects. For a brief moment, the cores started to pulse in union. The yellow one took the excess energy from the cyan one, turning green and allow it to stabilize to the next level. The two cores Resonation allowed its magic power to go way beyond its limits, to the point that the ring grew and expanded, covering the right hand in a form of a fingerless glove. It was still nothing compared to the Scorpicor's strength, and yet the creature stared in amazement. Nothing that night made any sense. Its patience had run out. I yield, 
Scarlett said, leaving Lit and Solus as shocked as the Scorpicor.